Alright, this is part three of the notes on unit three, matter and change, chemistry, and uh, chemical and physical properties. So, remember again, you can get online and go to privatehand.com, and it'll have the elements song in there that you can listen to. PowerPoint number three. Okay, if you're looking on your notes, this should be page three, um, Roman numeral number three, classification of matter. And again, these are things that you guys already know. This is just a reminder of, these, of uh, the characteristics of matter. All matter that you have around can be classified into two categories. They're either, either going to be pure or it's going to be a mixture. So we have pure substances and we have mixtures. Now, if it's a mixture, it's been physically put together. You take two things and you just smack them together, stir them up. You know, there are different ways to mix them together, but basically you just did something physical to them. You just put them together. Um, some things are mixed up really, really well. Some things are not mixed up quite as well. But it's a physical blend of two or more kinds of matter, each of which retains its own property. So it's like taking um, salt and sugar and mixing it together. It's hard to tell apart by eyeball, but you can taste the individual grains of salt. You can taste the, the grains of sugar that you put in there. And why you would mix salt and sugar, I don't know, but that's just what came to mind. 95% of everything on the planet in the universe are going to be mixtures. Now, it says draw the chart. We'll do that in class. So when you come into class, we'll have a uh, time to uh, create a matter matrix, a little chart that tells how you tell if something's uh, heterogeneous, homogeneous, and such. So the chart will look similar to this, not exactly the same, but similar to this. And it's just kind of like a yes-no problem. So we start off with matter. Can it be physically separated, yes or no? It doesn't mean it can be easily separated. I mean, if you take salt crystals and sugar crystals and mix them together, it would be really tough to separate them just by taking tweezers and saying, ooh, that looks like a salt crystal, and ooh, that looks like a sugar crystal. It wouldn't be practical to do that. So yes, it can be physically separated, or no, it can't be. Just because it's yes doesn't mean it's easy. If you can physically separate it, then you go down the left side of the chart where, yep, it's a mixture. Is the composition uniform? Does it look the same throughout? Yes, no. So you're answering a series of yes, no questions. Ooh, isn't that glass pretty? Okay, you can have a couple of types of mixtures. You can have homogeneous or homogeneous. It just depends on how you want to say it. Both, uh, both spellings are in the dictionary. And homo, you guys know homo means same. If it's a homogeneous mixture, it's uniform in composition. It means it looks the same all the way throughout. Um, uniform in composition. Using the word uniform, a lot of times people are unfamiliar with it used in this way. But when you go to McDonald's and you see the, the people working there in uniform, they look similar. Because of what they're wearing, they look similar. So they use that word uniform means it looks pretty much the same all the way throughout. Example, salt water. You put salt in water. It, it looks the same at the top as it does at the bottom, salt water. The ink that comes out of your pen, it's a mixture of different inks. We'll talk about chromatography and how to separate those inks out, but it's just a mixture, but it looks the same throughout. It's homogenous. Obviously, over on the right side of the picture, you can see the lovely apple juice, and it's nice and even all the way throughout. And you can tell that it's homogenous because it looks the same at the top as it does on the bottom. Okay, letter C, solutions. It's a, a solution is a type of homogeneous mixture. This is a homogeneous mixture and it's in liquid form. Really, really small particles and they're clear and they don't show anything called the Tyndall or Tyndall effect. And what that means is if we shine a light through it, it doesn't scatter the light out. That's the Tyndall effect. So solutions don't do that. And um, that's one of the ways you can tell the difference between a solution and something that's a colloid. If it's a heterogeneous mixture, it means it's not uniform throughout. It would be like if somebody over McDonald's, they were wearing, everybody was wearing their McDonald's uniform, but somebody else was wearing a Burger King uniform. They would stand out. It's something that you notice that's different. So heterogeneous, it's not uniform throughout. You can see parts with different properties throughout there. <clears throat> um, chocolate chip cookies are a great example of this. You can see the chocolate chips. You can see if you put walnuts or pecans in them, you can see those in there too. Um, trail mix. Trail mix, you can pull out the M&Ms and the raisins and the peanuts and all the different pieces that are in there. It's a heterogeneous. Hetero means different. All right. The next type, this is a heterogeneous mixture, but it doesn't necessarily look like it. This is called a colloid. 
And these colloids have median-sized particles, which means that <coughs> the particle size, the particle pieces are a little bit bigger. And because they're bigger, you can actually shine a light through it, and it'll spread the light out. And you can see this happening. Um, one of the labs we'll do, we'll be using some of the cool physics toys, and we'll use a laser, and we'll shine it through to tell if something is uh, a colloid or not. Now, that $10, time doll effect is when particles don't completely settle out. They're hanging. Those big uh, heterogeneous particles are hanging inside the liquid. And so when you shine the light through it, the light hits those little particles and it spreads it out. A great example of this is a fog. Uh, for you guys who drive, if you've ever driven in the fog, you turn your bright lights on and, oh my gosh, that light just is scattered and bounced back and everywhere. It's difficult to see. And that's why you keep your lights on dim when you're driving in the fog. Milk is an example of this. Uh, mayonnaise is an example. And it'd be kind of hard to shine a light through mayonnaise, but what they do is they take a little small amount of it and they dissolve it, stir it up in water, and then they shine the laser through it and they can tell whether or not it's a colloid. So somebody somewhere had a job of uh, putting a bunch of different things into water and seeing if they were colloids or not. Paint is a good example of colloids, too. <coughs> oh, look at the pretty picture. Next one would be a suspension. So we're still talking heterogeneous. And suspension is when you have a heterogeneous mixture in water with really large particles. That would, there's a dog going psycho in the background, so if you would just ignore that, I would appreciate it. OK, I'll try to. The dog's a little freak of nature. I'm sorry. So orange juice. Do you like orange juice with your pulp in it? I like orange juice with the pulp in it. I like to chew some of my orange juice. Um, that's a suspension. And when you have a suspension, if you let the stuff set, then all things, the particles, just sink down to the bottom. They'll separate out. There's no time doll effect. The particles settle to the bottom after a time. Examples would be fresh squeezed, squeezed orange juice with the pulp. Um, if you have muddy water, like I remember when you were a kid and you'd get a, a container and you'd fill it up with pond water, or you'd go out to the lake and fill it up with water and have mud and stuff on it. And if you let it sit there for a while, all the dirty stuff, mud and the muck, would settle down to the bottom. Or if you're a chocolate milk drinker. If you make up your own chocolate milk and, and you can stir it up, but after a while some of that chocolate kind of settles down to the bottom, or if it's powdered, some of it comes up to the top, it separates out. I don't know if milk stays around your house very, your refrigerator very long, but if you let the milk set in the refrigerator, just leave it alone and let it set for a couple of days, it'll start to separate out, and you'll have the little fat, little bit of fat that's in the milk come to the top because fat floats, and it'll just form a little ring. Not that it's spoiled, it's just kind of starting to separate out. You can just shake it back up. 